Hey guys, my name is Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. I create a lot of content for MSPs. And in today's video, I'm going to be covering the approvals app and the approval workflow in Microsoft Teams, which was recently introduced into the GA market. Before I get started though, if you do want to see more content around the MSP space, Microsoft, the SMB, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Getting into it here though, this is a recent announcement and release from Microsoft in the sense of this app. Approvals is built based off of the Flow or Power Automate framework and it gives a front end to that workflow instead of having to build those workflows in Power Automate. Essentially though, what you're doing here and what members of customer environments or internal in your MSP, what you guys can do here is create new approval requests which simply then give you the ability to send one to many people for approval and these could be various things like I've given examples here as far as project proposals, new hire resume approvals for moving on to the next stage, help desk documentation updates, RFP approvals, expense approvals even potentially if you're not using a third party software for this. So you can get really creative with this functionality. It may be lacking in the follow up, I would say as we get into that, I'll kind of give you a better picture of what that actually means. But it does give you a lot of flexibility into creating these within Teams channels. Before I get into the uniqueness here though, from uh, the standpoint of actually creating a new approval request, you want to make sure this is actually enabled in your organization. You can also disable it as well too. So let me sign back in here to the admin center real quick. So this is on by default in the introduction here, but you can turn it off if for some reason you didn't want users to be able to interact with this app or if somebody for some reason in your admin center turned it off, you basically in this section here wouldn't be able to find this under the apps section. Should be readily searchable for you to pull up, but you may have to go in here into the Teams admin center, go under Teams apps, manage apps, and you'll be able to find it here. So you could simply just search for it. And here you go, so we can click on this here and you'll see that it is allowed. You can turn it off here if you want. These other tabs here don't really have any information in them, so it's really just a binary on off switch here for it to be available within this particular tenant. And then users themselves will be able to find it and, and add it here to their left hand toolbar. So that's kind of how you set that up. Um, for security, the users themselves only see requests that have been sent by them or received because they were sent uh, from another person to them. Up in the right hand corner, this is associated to the particular Teams channel. So this is unique in the fact that you can start using this uh, approval workflow via a particular Teams channel and it associates the database of this activity to this particular Teams channel for heightened search abilities, things like that but it also gives you the ability to then direct certain questions that may be related to projects that are associated to the team in general. So just better organization there for you. When you click on new approval request here, you can simply put in a name of what this would be. So maybe it's another RFP. You can enter names in here of people you want to go ahead and approve this. And you can add multiple if you really wanted to as well. And you can require a response from all approvers before it's in an approved state. Or you could just say that one of these two people has to go ahead and approve it. Additionally, you can put more comments in here if you wanted to. And you can add an attachment from your computer if you really wanted to. And you can customize the responses. So what this means is um, by default, the responses that a person can give is to reject or accept, but you can create your own custom ones here for an if then statement or the, the statements that will be seen here. So you could say approved and a custom one that you want to deliver here. Doesn't have to be unique in that particular case. You could just go with the default approve or reject, but they did give you that option here. And the difference here, I'm not going to put this in for the custom one here, but the difference after I click on send, you'll be able to see this, is the color coding actually uh, that you see via the um, columns in here within this table. So you'll notice that these go into this requested state here after you send them, 
but you'll notice these two are different colors. This one's green, this one's yellow, and this one's also yellow in the sense that it says not approved, and this one says rejected. So I kind of want to go through the differences there. If you chose not to do the custom replies that you saw there in that toggle, by default it's going to go into an approved green state here with the default categories or red rejected if it is from the default categories. And if it's custom, depending on what that custom field is here, it'll just display that plain text string, uh, string that you put in there that you want to see here on this. And if you click on this, you can see the relevant details of how this went through and the final statuses. And if there's multiple people that had to go in there and respond to it, you could see all that history here within uh, this tab as well in the document that they were reviewing in this particular approval request. On the other side, uh, so let's pop into a portal in which this is a user that I just sent it to, Nick Ross. And if you click on this, you'll notice that they get this push notification uh, for the approval. And you'll see it has that language that I uh, put in here. And this person can then add more comments, you know, like this approve, this RFP, blah, blah, blah. And they can go into and approve that. And then this goes into this approved state on their side. And back on my side, on the, on the person who actually sent this, I have this all in the sent column. I can see the final status here being approved. And I get this push notification. Users don't get any type of email or anything like that, just so you know. Um, this is all coming from the notifications via Teams, just Teams in general right now. So that's the high level. Again, you can customize this. You could try to do training where you see an opportunity for this to work well within an organization versus purchasing an outside tool. Users can go into Power Automate if they're in their app section here and they just go into their Power Automate. Power Automate comes part of the base level plans like Business Standard and Business Premium. So they should have this licensing. They can also see this in the approval section here. Not that they would, but again, this is the underlying technology that is making this work for this particular user in this case is the um, actual environment. And this takes a while to catch up from what you've done from my experience. So it's not the most up-to-date information here, but it, it is tracking it in this particular column. The other thing I wanted to know personally was as an admin, can I audit these workflows and, and see this activity? So the answer is you can, if you go under the compliance admin center here for a particular tenant, And if you click under show all here, you can click on audit. And if you are in this section, you can click under here and you can search for Microsoft Teams approvals. And you'll see all these activities that you can audit off of files attached, canceled, rejected, approved, and everything like that, that you can put in here. And you can search based off that and then in your applied filters here, you can see all the metadata associated with this, which is people viewing, people creating, people attaching documents, things like that. The only thing that I didn't like is that there's no more metadata in here. So even though you can look at this and see timestamps and users who are interacting with it, I personally haven't found a way, there might be a way, but I haven't personally found a way that you can see the individual metadata underlying their request which is more so as an admin, I think, what, what I would want to see. Like, what are these people requesting? Uh, what, what approvals are going through? How could I better help them as an MSP through that? So maybe that's more information that I'll figure out at a later time, like this item in detail. I don't know if this is just taking a propagation in effect, like it takes 24 hours. If it does, I'll comment in the, the team video here, but it may be something that they haven't just added yet because this is so new. So those are the basic premises that I wanted to cover in this particular video. Um, again, it's not completely, you know, a, a great solution in my opinion. It's a good solution in the sense that it's doing this approval workflow, but a great solution is kicking off more workflows from the approval process, which is what Power Automate does fundamentally. But I think they're working their way towards front ending that a little bit more in the future. Uh, but it is good for some of these things that you want to do. I thought some of these things like the documentation updates, the project proposals, 
new hire moving through, stuff like that is, is particularly good use cases to put in this type of workflow so that you have a complete audit trail of people approving these things uh, within team channels and things like that. So again, guys, feel free to comment on the video below if you have any questions or comments. But otherwise, again, like or subscribe if you want to see more content around the MSP space and Microsoft 365. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.